What is happening, football fans? Welcome back inside the set of Gridiron Glory. I'm Josh Huntsberger. Can you believe that we're already halfway through the season? Whether you can or not, week five is upon us. And, and this week, the first set of playoff seedings were released. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just focus on all of the thrilling action that this week had to offer right now. Parkersburg South bounced back last week with a thrilling three-point victory over Musselman. The Patriots moved to 3-1 with the victory and are now scoring almost 28 points a game. But this week, they hosted University, a 4-0 team who has beaten every opponent by an average of 29 points. We are now welcomed by our West Virginia reporter, Seth Austin. Seth, clearly, Coach Bolin and his boys got their work cut out for him. Yeah, Josh, all Coach Bolin could talk about this week was how athletic this University team was. He said South practiced with a chip on their shoulder this week, knowing they would have to bring their A game to beat the visiting Hawks. Last year, Peace South took down University 21-3, and Tyler Boland wants to make sure that the result was the same tonight. Everything runs on this man right here, and he would get off to a very quick start here. 31-yard pass to Tyler Rouse on the second play of the game. Got him deep into University territory, making some cuts, which is a slant pass, 31 yards. Great catch and run, and on the very next play, Logan Cox takes the fullback dive, 33 yards up the middle for a touchdown. He's going to sidestep a few guys, run a few other guys over, and hey, at the end, at the end of the night, he'd be named homecoming king. Oh, look at that. <laughs> University trying to uh, match what uh, Parkersburg South was doing. 38 yards from quarterback Travis Runner here, deep into Parkersburg South territory. The drive would stall on fourth down, get stopped. So Parkersburg South is going to try some trick duration. The flip to Braxton Johnson, he's going to throw it back to his quarterback, Tyler Bowen. He's going to sidestep somebody, and he's going to, eh, I'm just going to get out of bounds. I'm the quarterback. i got to stay Boy, healthy. He steps back. He's going to return the favor. Sidestep the sack here. Find Braxton Johnson deep, 12 yards. That would turn into a uh, field goal. And then here's the reverse. That's Jordan Kiocho, but he doesn't have the ball. Braxton Johnson does on the reverse, 56 yards down the left sideline. he got Bowen blocking for him. Bowen's doing everything. Touchdown, 17 nothing. but then University getting back into it. Renner, 38-yard pass to his big tight end. Tony Richardson leads to a field goal, and then right before the half, Renner on an 11-yard keeper. 10-17, uh, they trail at halftime, but they would make a 17-point 17 uh, 17 comeback and get the win 27-23. to 23. Wow, Seth, like you said, Parkersburg South had them right where they wanted them, 17-10 to 10 at half. What happened? Well, it was a 17-point comeback, like we said, for University. They really pounded the rock in the second half. 49 yards, 200, 49 rushes for 260 yards, allowed them to beat down the, the South defense. And that's usually Peace South's offense. That's what they like to do is uh, run teams down at the fourth quarter. Well, I mean, every time we're watching this Parkersburg South team, we're talking about one guy, Tyler Bolin. He's on our watch list. Talk about his play tonight. Yeah, 10 of 20 for 149 yards and one interception. Wasn't his best game passing, but those trick plays really opened up the rushing for other guys to, you know, make the offense a rushing attack tonight. All right, now they dropped to 3-2 and two with this loss. What are they up against next week? Well, if they thought they saw athleticism this week, Josh, they got Friendship Collegiate Academy next week coming all the way down from our nation's capital. This team's going to be very athletic. It's going to be a very tough matchup for Parkersburg South next weekend. All right, well, hopefully they can bounce back. Thanks a lot tonight, Seth. Now, Wilson escaped their first four non-conference games with one victory. However, the, their three losses came to Jackson, Minford, and Oak Hill, who combined for a 10-2 record entering this week. Tonight, the Golden Rockets welcomed a winless Rock Hill squad to town with open arms. But the Redmen had every intention of making this their night. We are now joined by our TVC Ohio reporter, Pat Chiesa. Pat, both of these teams had a lot to play for tonight. You got that right, Josh. And keep in mind, Rock Hill has also had quite the buzzsaw of a schedule losing three of its first four games to teams that were undefeated heading into tonight. I talked with Walson head coach Chris Hutchinson earlier today, and he made it crystal clear that this was a must-win game for his team. And before the game, a special ceremony honoring former Wellston head coach Bill Fife as a cancer survivor, definitely heartwarming to see. And then there was football. Mistakes plagued the Rockets early. First play from scrimmage, Chris Stevens of Rock Hill picks off Jake Waldron. Five plays later, Jacob Malone runs six yards for six points, seven nothing Redmen, and another mistake is minutes away. A bad rocket snap gives Rock Hill the ball on Wilson's 30, but the Redmen turn it over on downs. And Wilson's Kane Wolford puts the opposing team on his back, literally 24 yards, scores on the next play. Josh gives that man some high quality H2O, but the Redmen would fight back. Chase Blankenship looking like Ohio running back Blow Bo Blankenship on this one, 47 yards to the Wellston 12, three plays later, Jonah Cox calls his own number, three yards to Pater. Rock Hill leads 13 to seven. But you know what, Josh? Noah Massey's had enough of this close game stuff. He gives the Redmen a great view of the back of his jersey on this one, coast to coast, 60 yards. Rockets take the lead 14 to 13, and they do not look back 
after recovering a Rock Hill fumble. Massey does it again on the second effort here. Punches that one in. Rock Hill began to feel this one slipping away as mental errors ensued. Yeah, we call that a late hit. Rock Hill would, do an, would have another late hit on the next play. And Jake Waldron says, enough of these late hits. I'm scoring a touchdown, 11 yards on the keeper, and the Golden Rockets would not look back, taking their final non-conference game 63-29 to over Rock Hill. Wow, big win for Wellston, dominant in this one. Mm -hmm. what, what was the biggest surprise to you in this game, Pat? Well, Josh, I'd have to say it was Wellston's offense. Uh, just 22 points per game in their first four games. They nearly tripled that tonight, putting up 63. Uh, it was firing on all cylinders for the Golden Rockets. Well, like you saw, they put up 63 points. What was going so right for that offense tonight? Well, it was extremely balanced. You know, Josh, there wasn't just one guy getting things done. Noah Massey, Dakota Brown, Jake Waldron, Kane Wolford, they all pitched inside. Rock Hill didn't know who was getting the ball next. It was a lethal combination for the Golden Rockets. All right, now, Wellston looked great tonight, but they weren't perfect. What would you say is the thing they need to improve on the most heading to Athens next? Oh, one word, tackling, and they're going to be doing a lot of that against Athens. Also another thing, they need to shore up that secondary, maybe work on that in practice next week. They didn't see a lot of throwing tonight from the Redmen, but they will most certainly see the ball aired out uh, quite a few times with Joey Burrow next week for the Athens Bulldogs. I think that's safe to say. All right, well, high scoring tonight. Hopefully we see more of that next week against Athens. Thanks a lot tonight, Pat. You got it. Now, if you'd like to keep up with Wellston or any of our other teams throughout the week, check us out on social media. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Gridiron Glory for score updates, pictures, and more. You can also follow my host Twitter account at GGHost underscore J-A-U-S-H. There you can get my opinions on weekly matchups, ask any questions, and let me know who you think will win each game of the week. Now, Wahama is off to a 4-0 start for the sixth consecutive season. The White Falcons enter tonight with 25 regular season wins in a row, and they still have never lost in the TVC Hawking. Tonight, they took on a 1-3 Waterford squad with the same old thing in mind. But this is the game of football. The second you let up, you get beat. And as far as the Wildcats were concerned, this was their Super Bowl. We now welcome our TVC Hawking reporter, Mike Bunt, to the desk. Mike, did Waterford believe that they could win this game tonight? Yeah, Waterford truly did believe they could win this game tonight. After a 1-3 start, the Waterford Wildcats are truly playing for the pride. The only thing Waterford was thinking about entering Friday night was pulling the upset of the season. Unfortunately for them, Wahama didn't have the same thing on their minds as the White Falcons were determined to continue their streak of dominance. You look here, Trenton Gibbs and Connor Roush just looking to get ready and prove why they have the top offense in the TV's Hay Hawking. Roush gets it started with a 64-yard run on the first play of scrimmage. Nice play right there to get the game started. Later in the drive, Trenton Gibbs gets a 13-yard touchdown pass to Wyatt Zuspan. Wahama would go up 8-0 as they made the two-point conversion. Then, Zach Wamsley says, I want to get involved in the action too. 76-yard touchdown run for him. And then, next thing you know, Wahama is up 14-0. And we're not even three minutes into the contest yet. Waterford, they want to get back into the game though. Down 22, Brian Moore finds Austin Shriver for a 30-yard pass down the middle of the field. Moore here on fourth and inches decides to take it himself takes a six-yard run to the two-yard line of Wahama, and later, Hunter Moon just gets a one-yard touchdown run. Waterford within 15 points at 22-7 Wahama, but unfortunately for Waterford, Kane Roush responds with another touchdown, a seven-yard run, and then here's the interesting play of the game. Wamsley looks like he's gonna get tackled for a loss. No, he laterals it. Trenton Gibbs will take this ball 70 yards for a touchdown. Unfortunately, it was called back as there was a penalty at the 21-yard line for holding, but still pretty cool to play to see, and it ended up leading to a touchdown as Wahama went on to win 64-35 to in just an offensive showcase. It was really unbelievable to watch. Wow, so here we are with Wahama now 5-0, rolling again. Mike, the question's on everybody's mind. Can they go undefeated again? Wahama can definitely go undefeated. They've done it two of the last they've done it the last two years. Their toughest opponent really is Fedhawk remaining on the schedule. Outside of that, it's really just a bunch of Fed, uh, TVC hockey games. There's no reason to think that Wahama won't go undefeated for a third consecutive season. All right, now tonight we saw some great plays from Kane Roush. What do you think is so important about him. What does he bring to this offense? Kane Rush is just one of those guys who's versatile. He always finds the hole. He's fast. He's speedy. He knows where to go. Today he had five carries for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. It's a running back like that that's just truly talented. He always knows where to go at the right time. All right, now Trenton Gibbs, quarterback for Wahama, he's taking over. He's doing his thing. He's right now, wouldn't you say he's looking like the best player in the entire conference? He's definitely the best player of the entire conference. Easily a player of the year type nominee. He can pass. He can run. He's just what you call a mobile dual threat quarterback. All right, thanks a lot tonight. Big win for Ohama. Thanks, Mike.
There was plenty of action around the TVC Hawking tonight besides the Wahama Waterford game. We are now joined by our Hawking reporters Keith Turner and Morgan Eastman, who is making her Gridiron Glory debut. Keith, Morgan, break down the rest of this conference for us. Well, thanks, Josh. As Mike said, uh, another win for Wahama. They've been dominant, of course, throughout the years. But the rest of the league, the rest of the Hawking, looks like it could be a battle royale for the rest of the league because, I mean, you look at right under uh, Wahama is Federal Hawking, who is playing very well. They just got a 14-7 victory over Belpre. Strong defense has been the story for Belpre. Peyton Seal tonight, 10 tackles, 2 tackles for a loss and interception. Talk about that team. Yeah, and this 14-7 win tonight against Belpre puts them right as many wins as they had last season. So only halfway through the season, they have these five weeks to really make moves in the rest of this conference. Now, they played, they played Belpre, who is still struggling from losing their all-team quarterback. And, you know, two weeks ago, they're getting closer. 14-7, last, or two weeks ago against Southern, was their first win since October 7, 2010, when they won by 10, or won by 20 against Miller. Now, this Eastern and uh, South Gallia team, Eastern's knocking out of the park 62-6. But South Gallia, I mean, I'm going to come out and say it, Keith. What's going on with this team? They were 0-5, 0-4 in the conference. I mean, they made playoffs last season. What's happening with the South Gallia team? Well, this is just a South Gallia team who's struggling with experience. They had a lot of guys graduate last year, and this was an Eastern team who have a lot of experience coming back, and this Eastern team showed that experience tonight with a 62-6 victory over South Gallia. Now, you want to talk about someone who's on fire. How about Connor Stanleman standing that Trimble offense? Yeah, well, I've got two words to describe Trimble this year, and that's young and driven. This is the first time in Trimble Tomcats history when they've had two juniors as captains. They beat Miller 66-0 tonight. In the next five weeks, they're going to be playing teams without winning records, so that's really going to help them in the conference. And Miller, their first victory just came against South Gallia last week, but they've got a new coach, hoping to see them make some moves in the league. Absolutely. So, Josh, as you can hear, man, it's going to be a great, great rest of the season in TVC Hawking. We're not sure what's going to happen, but we're going to have to turn it back over to you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Great coverage tonight. Now, we're bringing you two head-to-head matchups between the TVC Ohio and the SEOAL tonight. First, we're going to start off with Gallia Academy hosting Benton County. The Blue Devils came back with style last week with a dominant 63-13 win over Marietta. But the Vikings grabbed their first win as well, and they're looking to keep things rolling tonight. Now we're going to welcome our TVC Ohio reporter Kyle Brackey to the desk, who is making his Gridiron Glory debut. Kyle, you talked to head coach Mike Eddy of Gallia Academy this week. What did he have to say about this matchup? Well, that's right, Josh. Coach Eddie really stressed getting better week in and week out. He said he wanted to treat every game left in the regular season like it was a playoff game. But this week they welcomed Venn County squad that got their first win on last week. And the Vikings were looking to keep this momentum going against the Blue Devils Friday night at Memorial Field. We'll pick this one up in the first quarter. Guy Academy on top, 20 to nothing already. And it's Venn County quarterback Andy Long. He's going to try to run the option here but it's a bad pitch and Gallia Academy is gonna take over on their own 32 yard line. Later, the very next play actually, quarterback Wade Gerald is gonna to roll to his left and he's gonna fire deep. He's gonna find Justin Bailey all the way down to the two yard line, but wait, he coughs it up and Vinton County is gonna recover. Oh, no. Later in that Vinton County drive, quarterback Andy Long is gonna to roll to his left and he is going to fire deep, but he has his ball picked off by Cody Call. He gets a few blocks, makes a few guys miss, and he's all the way out to midfield. Nice job there by the Blue Devils. A few plays later, it's Logan Allison. He's going to take a reverse down the right sideline, 29 yards, all the way down to the Vinton County 15-yard line. And four plays later, it's Nick Clegg doing the rest from one yard out. That put Gallia Academy up 27-6. Coach Eddie loves that. But after the kickoff on the first play, he's not going to like this. Quarterback Andy Long is going to find Dylan Accord. He's going to turn on the afterburners, and he is racing to the end zone. But he will be pushed out of bounds at the four-yard line. And four plays later, Andy Long does it himself. The quarterback sneak, it was 27-6 at halftime. Galley Academy goes on to win 40-12. The offense has just been rolling, Josh. In the past two games, 103 points for the Blue Devils. Wow, you know, you're usually talking about that Gallia Academy defense. So now we're talking about the offense. How were they so successful tonight, Kyle? Well, the offense was so successful because of the running game. They've really prided themselves on the running game all year, rushing for 1,000 yards as a team coming into tonight. And six different players have scored rushing touchdowns. So they were able to keep that momentum going. All right, now, Vinton County, on the other hand, they dropped to one and four. What do you think they need to improve on the most? Defense. They really need to work on defense. 
they have they moved the ball offensively most of the night, but uh, once in the red zone they had an interception, a fumble, but the defense just could not get off the field or get any stops. All right, I know you're making your debut, but I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. Do you think Gallia Academy has what it takes to dethrone Jackson and take the SEOAL this year? I do, and in fact, not only do I believe that, I think they're the favorite right now to win the SEOAL. All right, thanks a lot tonight, Kyle. Great job. Now, to keep up with our coverage every day of the week, log on to our website at woub.org slash gridiron. There you can find game previews, videos, and score updates on all of our featured teams. You can also find standings, playoff seedings, and pretty soon see which players will be, have a chance to be named Gridiron Glory's Player of the Year. It's now time to take a little break from highlights and have some fun. Every week we give some love back to our viewers and tonight had a special place in my heart. We went back to my hometown of Logan to visit old friends, eat some good food, and most importantly find our next Fan of the Week. One of my few touchdowns came right here in a playoff game. We ended up winning the game, but uh, right after I did get in trouble for the celebration. So maybe not the best role model, but I did score one of my couple touchdowns right there. Thanks, Mom. Mwah. Thank you, Grandma. Mwah. Okay, <laughs> I'm not kissing you, Grace. Sorry. Uh, are you crazy? Oh. I'm crazy. You're crazy? Have you not seen? Have you not been here the last two home games, have you? I haven't been here. Ooh. I'm here now. Show me that you're crazy. Ooh, I'm not, can I show you on my phone? Goo! So, I think the fact that you're interviewing right now while getting your face painted is pretty, pretty worth it. I don't want, I don't want a beard. Well, I've always wanted a beard though. Bunch of good food, it's awesome. Grandma, I gotta say though, you're usually one of the loudest fans in the stands. Yes, Why are you being so quiet right now? <laughs> because I don't want to embarrass you. Come on. <laughs> mm. Don't spit on my mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just Are these boards regulation size? Oh, I guess. Yeah. Foreign exchange tool from Soviet Russia. We don't want him. We need we need this for our home country. No cheap dance! <laughs> Do I look embarrassed? Do I look embarrassed? No. A little bit, but I'm proud. I'm proud. We came to a decision. The best outfit and the loudest fan tonight is Captain America. <laughs> Hey, well, congrats to you, Abby, and thanks so much to the Logan Faithful for a wonderful homecoming tonight. Now, believe it or not, folks, those fans weren't just there to see me. They were there for a long-lost rivalry game against Nelsonville York. The Buckeyes have won their last two games to get back to 500 and seem to be on the right track. And even though the Chieftains were still searching for that first win, this game meant more to them than any of their other first four matchups. Now, we're now joined live in Logan with our TVC Ohio reporter, Mark Pierce. Mark, how important was this game for both of these teams? Josh, Logan, shut out last week against Jonathan Alder. It's so much, so much pressure there for them. They wanted to come out and make a statement. But Nelsonville, York, two straight wins in their last two games after opening the season with two losses. They wanted to come out and make a statement, too. They needed a big game to make sure they stayed in contention in the TVC Ohio crown race. So much support here for Logan Chieftains this afternoon. A beautiful shot here at Logan Chieftains Stadium, and the crowd was hyped up. After the first snap of the game, Corey McCarty, their star, intercepts Joe Young in Nelsonville, York. Like I said on the very first snap, but that would be the best highlight for Logan all night. Because from there, Clint Handa only needed two touches to score the ball twice on a 42-yard TD run, and then a 53-yard TD, this, that TD run to the house. They fake the PAT, convert it, 15-0 is your score. And then on the kickoff, more bad news for Logan. Dean Jordan muffs the, muffs the return. Nelsonville York recovers, and like the old Aerosmith song says, like the old Aerosmith song says, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The same old song and dance. Clint Handa scores again to put the Buckeyes up 22-0. And then from there, 
Nelsonville York, the sack, Neil Polly, so much, so much defense there for the Nelsonville York, and and from really it was just a it was just a Buckeyes show. Nathan, uh, excuse me, Joe Young on the fake, he scores again. Twenty-eight nothing is your score. Every phase of the game for Ath for uh, Nelsonville York, excuse me, offense, defense, and special teams got it done. Fumble recovery, thirty-five yards by Jer Jacob Blake. 50 nothing 50 to nothing is your final score. All right, so 50 to nothing is your final score. Nelsonville York putting up 50 points, man. What's going? This stuff's got to be going right. Clint Handa, easy to say, easy to say. Clint Handa was the key to this game tonight. Three touchdowns on the day. It showed his explosiveness. Uh, we talked to Coach Boston after the game, and he said he said that uh, you know Clint Handa has just been getting better each week, and he's he's really one of the factors for this Buckeye squad that uh, keeps the engine flowing. All right. Well, Nelsonville York improves to three and two. Logan's still looking for that first win. Thanks a lot tonight, Mark. Now it's now time on our show for extra points. Here I do my best to call two games worth of highlights in just one quick minute. Let's get rolling. We're going to start things out here with New Lexington at Morgan. You're going to see here quarterback Alex Bryant for New Lex doing his best to get the, the game going through the air. Breaks the tackle, throws it up to his boy Gerald Spawn down the sideline. Maybe got away with the push off. I won't tell anybody. 43 yard touchdown. They go up 6 0. Now Morgan trying to do their best to respond. Kyle Erich. Option. We saw this very similar play last week. Nice fake there on the pitch. Goes 78 yards for a touchdown, but they would miss the extra point as well. They'd be tied 6-6. Six to six. Now, New Lexington going back to the passing game. It worked before not. Why not go back? Bryant here drops back. Lofts up a jump ball to Bryce Glick, and it worked out. 25-yard gain, and they would move down inside the territory, but Bryant took it himself from there. Two-yard touchdown run. New Lex wins big, 41-6. Now we're going to switch things over to Trimble at Miller. Starting in the third quarter, Trimble's already winning big. And they're just making it hurt now. Big sack in the backfield for Mike, Mike at Couch. Now Connor Stanley here using his arm. Got the screen pass out to Wyatt Deke for a 10-yard gain. Nice little run after catch there. Quarterbacks love that. And Connor Stanley, proven that he has the arm. Nice ball here. 21-yard touchdown. Beautiful throw to the back in the end zone. Trimble wins 66 to nothing. Now, after avenging their 2011 loss to Dover last week, the Tri-Valley Scotties feel that they are on a path to the perfect season. But tonight, they hit the road to take on a 2-2 Crooksville team, and the Ceramics are coming off a loss, but it was in a close game against undefeated Sheridan. Their strong rushing attack might just make them the team to sneak up on the Scotties and make for an action-packed Game of the Week. All right, now we now welcome Brad Hawley to chat about our game of the week. Now, Brad, Tri-Valley has this high-powered offense. We all know about it. But Crooksville's got a solid O as well. Yeah, that's right, Josh. And we all know about the Scotty offense. They're averaging 41 points a game, but you can't sleep on that ceramic offense either. They come in averaging 30 points of their own. But that would be tested by Tri-Valley defense tonight at Village Park Stadium. And what a beautiful night at Village Park Stadium in Austin Jones. He had a beautiful night too. He gets it started 27 yards on the right side. He gets inside the 20 and bulldozes his way all the way to the 13 yard line. You know what, you did all the work Austin, so go ahead and uh, get yourself a touchdown. That is four. Or that was one of four touchdowns on the night for Austin Jones. A little chickeration here. Aaron Keister rolls out in punt formation, hits Dylan Love 24 yards and they are on the move. But Lake Channel, next, next play Lake Channel, Tries to go deep, throws it in the coverage, and Adam Reese with the interception at the 10-yard line. And guess what? The Scotties and Jones are on the move again. This time, left side. Look at this big block. Boom! And he is going 34 yards, and that will set up Nathan Strzok. He wants to go through the air now. Uh, rolls out, 8-yard touchdown run to Devin Moran, and it is 14-0 Tri-Valley. Strzok likes going through the air. 
He rolls out again and finds Trevor Kruskup deep behind the ceramic defense, and that's 41 yards. What a play. And that's right, man. He did it all night long. And guess what? The ceramics are steaming mad. They like this, though. Lake Channel to Jeffrey Patrick, 10 yards, but it gets called back for a flag. It was like that all night, Josh. And Shark, I keep telling you, man, he likes going through the air right now. Deep again, Hunter Muller. That sets up another touchdown. Scotty's roll, 63 to nothing. And Josh, I tell you what, Austin Jones had four touchdowns. Dylan Scott was not impressed. He had nine carries, 159 yards, and four touchdowns. Wow, Brad. So, like we were saying, Crooksville, they're averaging 30 points a game, but Tri-Valley didn't allow them one point tonight. Talk about that Tri-Valley D. Well, Josh, they, the Tri-Valley defense had five three and outs in the first half alone. And I know Coach Buttermore was worried about uh, Lake Channel. He had a, over 140 yards rushing against Sheridan, a very good Sheridan defense. He had 18 total yards 18 total yards for the whole game. I mean, this defense was stout all night long. All right, now it seems like we're only always talking about Nathan Strzok and Austin Jones with that crazy good offense for Tri-Valley now, but talk about that offense as a unit completely. And that offense as a unit is a lot of fun to watch. We all know about Austin Jones. He had four touchdowns tonight. How about Nathan Strzok? Over 200 total yards, but if you didn't notice, every time that Strzok threw the ball. It was to a different receiver in my highlights. I did that on purpose because he threw seven different receivers. This team is so much fun to watch because there's playmakers all around the field. All right, now Crooksville, they struggled in most every aspect of the game tonight. They were against a solid team, though, but next week they got Maysville. Maysville. That's no easy team. How are they going to bounce back? Well, I mean, I thought Tri-Valley was going to be the team that maybe comes out complacent against a tough Dover team, but... It was actually Crooksville that came out a little slow, and I, you just can't do that against a good Tri-Valley team. All right, well, another win for Tri-Valley. They're going to try to keep rolling to 10-0. Great job tonight, Brad. It's now time for the superstar portion of our show. All of our games tonight brought us stellar performances, but only a few were able to make our cut for this week's edition of Top Plays. We're going to start out at number three here for Parkersburg South. Logan Cox going to go up the middle and bounce things to the outside. 33-yard touchdown run here. Early, this was great for them early, but they would lose this in the end, 27 to 23. Number two, Wellston's Noah Massey coming down the sidelines here and then just stopping on a pinpoint, cutting back all the way across the field. Probably runs 100 yards to gain 40, gets a touchdown. Wellston wins 63-29. Now at number one, we saw this in our extra points. New Lexus Alex Bryant rolls out, breaks a tackle, looking like Mike Vick in the backfield and just lofts it up to Gerald Spawn. Great catch, gets the flag, but that was on the defense and they get the win. 41 to 6. Hey, well, we can't bring you any more highlights tonight, folks, but don't you fret. We'll be back in seven days to bring you even more games. Here's where we're headed in week six. The midway point of the regular season has come and gone, and the back end of the year brings us nothing but conference play. The two Eagles of the TVC Hawking will square off when Eastern travels to Belpre. After an insane non-conference schedule to start the year, Chillicothe will open up league play on the road against current SCOAL leader, Gallia Academy. We're heading to Basil Rudder Field to select a member of the Athens crowd to be our next Fan of the Week. Across the river, Williamstown is looking to keep their playoff hopes alive at home against St. Mary's. Crooksville will travel to Maysville to finish their MVL gauntlet after playing Sheridan and Tri-Valley the past two weeks. Our Game of the Week will feature John Glenn at Sheridan. This matchup was decided by just a touchdown last year and could give the winning team just the boost they need toward an MVL title. Hey, that's our show for tonight. Now, we've recently received word that some members of our military are tuning into our show online all the way from Kuwait. We'd like to personally thank you for your viewership and especially your service to our country. We'll keep bringing the goods next week, but until then, I'm Josh Huntsberger reminding you that there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory.